trying to figure out how I want to mount this door back on and I, I want to use the insulation and uh, you know like the wood stove door stuff this stuff here and uh, so I need to figure out you know some kind of a channel or something to to uh, get it in there but I'll figure that out first I need to cut the opening between the two and uh, um, I've really been debating, I kind of want to put a plate across the bottom and make this thing reverse flow. I've done one reverse flow before that the temperature was awesome. It, uh, I mean, it was very even temperature all the way across. And, uh, I really think I kind of want to do that with this one. I'm not real sure. The problem is, is the plate's so expensive that, you know, I'm slowly racking up a heck of a bill here. Um. I still have, I don't know, about three feet of good plate, a quarter inch plate from this, that I can, you know, put a three foot plate in there, which that may be enough, it'll cover, you know, a good ways. I like using quarter inch plate across the bottom of that because it acts as a heat sink also. Um, it, uh, you know, it's going to suck up the heat and keep radiating heat. And that's, I think that's what helps with a lot of the even temperature. The reverse flow also, all the smoke's going to travel underneath the plate and it's going to come out at this end. And the exhaust stack's going to be at this end. So, you know, it's going to come under, travel up, it's going to cross all the food, and then it's going to go out the exhaust. It really is a very efficient, uh, efficient way to do this. I really think that's what I need to do with this big of a chamber. I got the wheels on, as you can see. Uh, it's coming along pretty good. This thing's about six foot tall to here. It sits pretty high, but uh, I'm pretty happy with it. The, I got the hole cut inside there. Put a piece of expanded across there to help, uh, you know, keep some sparks and bigger chunks out of there. I went and got some 3 sixteenths plate. I am going to make it reverse flow and weld a plate in the bottom. Uh, I, I want to get that done today. I got to get, you know, I got the firebox cut out um, for the door, but I got to get some angle iron. Well, I got the angle iron. I just got to figure out some kind of a frame. I got to figure out some kind of a frame to put uh, put around it to hold that gasket, that wood stove gasket. Other than that, we're... Uh, it's coming right along. I wanna. My newest idea that I was thinking is I want to put, you know, a prep table here, but it's gonna be in the way if if I mount it to the smoker. So I want to mount it on a hinge here, and I want to make it to where it swings out, and you know has its own legs here. So that basically. Uh, you, you know, you can use it up against, or you can swing it out and have it come uh, out like this, or you can have it in line with the smoker itself, you know. It'll swing anyway, and it'll have its own legs to support it on the outside. I think that'll really, really help this thing. Um, so, yeah, i got to start cutting steel up because it's all in my way, and putting stuff together and quit talking about it. <laughs> All right, guys. I got the uh, the framework underneath the smoker for the bottom rack. I'm gonna weld everything. Uh, weld the wheels on solid. They're just tacked right now, and uh, so that I can move around comfortably. And then I want to get my sheet of 316s in here and start building that reverse flow plate. And I think I'm also gonna do the warming box over the firebox. So get that start getting that cut up, but at least once that's all welded, 
I'll be able to roll this thing around and won't have to worry about it falling over or having to use the chain hoist to move it. All right, guys. So I got the uh, the plate inside. It's three sixteenths plate. I'm gonna cut. I need a two foot section to fit across the bottom of that uh, chamber for the reverse flow. I'm gonna cut two one foot sections, and I'm gonna weld a piece of angle in the middle as a uh, grease channel, and so it'll be you know a little bigger. It'll probably be twenty six inches. A little bit less, give or take. So I'm probably 25 and a half, 25 three quarter. Uh, it worked really good on the last one I did. Uh, that was reverse flow. That grease channel actually catches a lot of stuff if you slope those plates coming in a little. Uh, it, uh, you slope them coming in a little bit, and everything runs right to the middle. And then you, you run a, a drain with a check valve, and you can open and close. And that way you can drain everything. It makes it super easy to clean. It, it really is the better way to go. Um, and if you put some water down there, all the grease strips into water. And so when you open that valve up, everything runs out. It's not just burnt grease on the bottom of that tray. So I got the old longevity force cut fired up. And, uh, you know, I don't get anything from any of these people. Uh, that I found a few tools that I really like and that have been fairly inexpensive. This one here, I wasn't real sure about because, uh, you know, it's being a Chinese machine and all that. They used to be garbage that all the Chinese machines used to be. But all these machines, the Everlast, Longevity, all of them seem to come a long way. So I took a chance. I bought this one used. Uh, it's an 80 amp machine. And it is literally, I've cut inch and a half thick stuff which is pretty awesome. I, it says it'll sever 
two inch, I believe, but I haven't had a chance to cut anything like that. I've cut an inch and a half, and, uh, you know, it's a little slow, but it cuts through it. And, I mean, it's great for pretty much everything. So, um, uh, anyways, I'm rambling about my tools. And, uh, I really do love that. That's probably my favorite tool in the whole shop is that five inch cutter. Um, Alright, so I'll get this cut and we'll get it, get it going. does a pretty nice smooth cut uh, the little squiggles are that was my fault I uh, either it started to stop and I wasn't perfectly in the line or something so yeah that was some of my fault but other than that that longevity I mean it cuts really really good when it cuts us 3 16 as fast as I can pull it and it's only uh, it's set at 45 amps right now yeah uh, you know it should cut that fast but it does a pretty good job. I'm I'm super super happy with it. Uh, if there's anybody who'd like me to do a video on just that and kind of run through the machine, if you're thinking about buying one or something, uh, leave me a comment or something, and I'll we can do a video on that. But. All right, so I got my uh, my plate all tacked together and standing up. I'm gonna weld this vertical down because there's really no reason. I'll weld both sides downhill. Uh, there's no reason for crazy amount of strength all it's got to do is seal it up so i'll run it downhill and uh should be good all right guys i uh i finally got this plate welded in that's the reverse flow plate i got uh the uh the angle in the middle welded there for the grease channel i'm gonna drill a hole or use a hole saw or something <coughs> and uh you know, run a pipe out the bottom <coughs> with a ball valve there, like I said. Uh, it turned out all right. It was really kind of a pain in the butt to weld. I got plates on this back side uh, that I had to kind of shim up a little because there were big gaps on both sides. You know, this, this style tank, the material is so thin that, I don't know, it's just... I don't think I would ever build another one out of one of these tanks unless somebody said that that's what they wanted. Uh, and, you know, I'm really kind of fighting with it pretty hard, but overall it's turning out good. It's I'm really, really super happy with it. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of that thinner material. The uh, Got the rack around the bottom today. Got the wheels. Everything's welded solid. Um, I think that's about it. it uh, I think that's about it. It's going good. It's. Uh, I apologize. It's been such a long series. Uh, there's a lot of parts to it. I really have been working my butt off on this thing, and uh, you know, it's, there's a lot more work than what it looks like. I've been. I edited a lot of video out, and trying to make it as short as possible, and they still seem to come up as, you know, 13, 14 minute videos, um, I don't know, I hope you guys are enjoying them, and, and thanks to everybody who's already subscribed, uh, it really does mean a lot to me when, 
when you guys subscribe because it, it lets me know that you guys are enjoying what I'm doing and, and you're wanting to follow what I'm doing. So thank you very much, and uh, please long, <laughs> please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I hope to get some more done tomorrow, and, and I'll get another video up. Thanks.